Hello friends, welcome to the third installment of the Art of Budgeting. Today we continue with our discussion of budget ingredients. And maybe just to recap, the last time we spoke, we spoke about categories. And the idea was to make sure that we use our budget to deploy our income to the areas that make us function as human beings. And therefore, we divided it into a couple of categories. And just to recap, these are the categories that we looked at. We said what makes us human being, part of being human being is our spiritual life, which has to do with our spiritual growth, has to do with honoring God. Um, we also spoke about the physical life, which has to do with health, safety, shelter, uh, hygiene. We also spoke about the, the professional life, our business, our, our jobs. It's important that you send your money to make you able to continue doing your job. So this is being able to drive to work, to transport to work, um, you know, things like that. And of course, we spoke about the, the inter intellectual part of our lives, which has to do with hobbies, developing other skills, making sure that you can do things outside your normal day-to-day -day job, send your money to that. And we spoke about the social life of, 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 of being human, which has to do with leisure, fun, relaxation, um, you know, hang out with friends, things like that. The emotional part is also very important. More often than not, we ignore the mental health. And we want to make sure that we send our money. Our money must be useful to us in assisting us to, to work on our mental health. So that the emotional part is also important. We also added another category, which is protection. It is very important that you protect your assets, you protect your ability to generate income, you also take care of financial images. The budget is a tool to assist you with that. And of course, we agreed that the whole point of budgeting is to make sure that you meet your basic needs, not just today, but also in the future. And that's why we added the category of investment, which is where, which is money for, for, future, for future goals. And of course, the whole point again is to make sure that you use the, the budget to help you remove anything that threatens your ability to build wealth, anything that threatens your ability to meet your basic needs. And debt is one of those things. And therefore, we have a category for debt repayments. Right. So let's get into today's uh, lesson, which has to do with the, the other ingredient, which is labels. I want to show you the power of labeling your expenses with these different labels. And the power in that is that you, whenever financial difficulties come, labels are what helps you to chop and change. And it's very important, and I'll show you why that's important. And maybe just to recap, um, the whole rule of thumb with budgeting is that it must assist you. It is a tool. It is a tool. It must assist you to always meet your basic needs, not just today on a monthly basis, but also in the future. But the budget must also assist you to remove anything that threatens your ability to meet your basic needs today and in the future. And debt is one of those things. Financial emergency is another thing. And everything else is secondary. That is luxuries. So let's get into the idea of labels. And these are the four labels that I want us to talk about. I want to talk about needs versus wants. Variable versus fixed expenses, debt versus cash, and actual versus savings. And let's start with the issue of labeling your budget, um, labeling your, your different expenses, whether they are needs or they are wants. And it's quite an interesting thing that, um, you know, during this um, COVID-19, we are forced into a lockdown, and then we learned very interesting terms. One of the terms that we learned was essential and non-essential uh, services. And I think we've had good practice into identifying what do we really need to survive as human beings and what is it that is just a want, the non-essentials. And I suggest that you do the same thing on your budget. You, when you've listed your expenses under the different categories, then label them. This one is a want, this one is a need, etc., etc. Right. For example, one of the things that we discovered during lockdown was that there were a number of things we were able to live without as, as, as far as expenses are concerned. For example, some of us have started washing our own cars, which means we know, we, we've realized that going to the car wash is a non-essential. Now, listen to me. The idea of labeling your things is not to suggest that your budget must not have any wants, must not have luxuries, but it's to say that you must be able to know what is it in my budget is a luxury and what is it in my budget is a need. It's very important because when you need to chop and change, you must be able to, without getting too emotional, 
identify the things that are non-essential and be able to chop them. So that's why it's important to label those. We also discovered that we can do our own garden and, and save a few rents uh, here and there. And therefore we realized that maybe spending on a gardener was not an essential. It's a non-essential. I may continue doing it, but I know that it's a non-essential. Right? We also discovered certain things that we spend money on, but we're not getting the full value. For example, if you look at pay TV, you pay for an idea that says you are paying for 24 hours. But you've realized as you were sitting at home that actually I don't watch 24 hours of TV because the TV is not interesting for 24 hours. We've also discovered alternative to pay TV. For example, um, you know, streaming, um, you know, on-demand kind of things, things like Netflix, Showmax and things like that, where I, I actually watch what I want to watch all the time. And, 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 therefore, and that's the whole point, again, of labeling um, needs and wants. We are able to also discover, are there alternatives to what I've always thought I needed? Right. So I want us to, to, to really talk about that. So on needs and wants, so you label, you label them, you label your spending lines uh, as either needs or wants. But maybe let's understand what's the difference between needs and wants. And it's very important that we understand this, this, um, this, this, this difference. So firstly, wants are things we can survive without, okay? And needs are things we cannot survive without. Um, wants are, are things that we can generate income without. For example, I can generate income without yogurt. Let's be honest, right? So it's not necessarily a need, although it's part of food, but it's not a need, it's a want. I can generate income without, um, I don't know, without pay TV. You know, I don't need it to generate my income. Needs are things that I cannot generate income without. For example, I cannot go to work without transportation. So transportation becomes a need, you know. And then, of course, wants are also the way they cost. They are, they are normally um, at the top end and the top range um, in terms of their cost. Needs um, are always cheaper alternatives, you know. Yes, I need food but it doesn't have to be the most expensive food, it doesn't have to be a restaurant. Which really brings me to another thing that we must guard against when it comes to our spending. It is very easy, and I want you to be careful of this, it is very easy for something that started out as a need to evolve, you know, like how this butterfly, um, you know, the evolution of a butterfly. It's very easy for something that was a need to evolve into becoming a want. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. We know that um, we get thirsty as people and water is part of the need. It's part of what helps us with our health. So, water is a need. But I can always graduate it from just tap water to bottled water. Now, suddenly, I've moved from tap water to bottled water. Water is still a need, but I'm busy now. Uh, the way I'm meeting need, this need is in, a, in a, is in a very luxurious manner, right? And then I can move from bottled water to flavored water. Now suddenly the, 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 want, the need is busy graduating into one. And then lastly, I just say, you know what, I like, I like cool drink because it's part of being thirsty. It's in my groceries because food is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a basic need. But I've just, I've just, because of what I'm putting in my process. So let me give you another example. Shelter is, is a need. But you can easily graduate shelter from being a need to being a one. For example, I mean, <laughs> let, let's talk about this. When you were at university or at college, this was your room. You know, really, a typical rest room looks like this. And really, it was meeting a basic need, which is shelter. Okay? And then as soon as you graduated, you started staying in a townhouse. Again, okay? it's still shelter, but this was also shelter. In other words, I didn't need to stay in a fancy townhouse. I could have still stayed in a back room. Let's be honest. Just as a basic need, right? But then I then graduate and I now stay in um, a cluster, kind of because I'm earning a bit more. I graduate and suddenly I've got this mansion. Yes, the basic need is shelter, but the way I'm meeting it is luxurious. So I've turned it into a one. So those are the type of things that I want us to, to actually um, focus on. Transport is a basic need and it could be provided through public transport, but... Sometimes we buy cars because we need cars and they're more convenient. But again, I can graduate from a basic car to a slightly luxurious car or graduate from a slightly luxurious car to a very, very expensive car. Again, transportation is a need, but the way I'm approaching it has turned it into a want. 
So, basically, so what it means is that I go into my budget, I've gone and I've put the categories, I've put the expenses inside the categories, and then I start labeling it. Is it a need? Is it a want? So I put an N, I put a W for a need one. Now, why is this useful? And, and I want us to think about this thing. Why is labeling your things, your expenses, between needs and wants very useful? For starters, once you start facing financial difficulties, for example, let's say I suddenly realize that um, my expenses are starting to exceed my income. When I've labeled things as needs and wants, I'm then able to go straight into my wants and start cutting because those I can cut. Do you see why it's important? So it makes it easier. When I start planning my budget, before I become emotional and I start labeling these things, when I'm under pressure, I don't have to think twice. I go straight into my wants, and those are the ones that I can cut. As you can see, we've labeled groceries as needs and wants because inside our groceries, there are things that are not needs. And then we are able to remove those things when the going gets tough. So it's very important to label that. Let's go to the second label that I want to share with you, which is the label between fixed and variable expenses. When you go to each expense and say, is it fixed or variable? Let me give an example of what's the difference between fixed costs and variable costs. So for example, fixed costs are the, is that you pay the same amount each month. With variable costs, the, month, the, the amount differs from month to month. With fixed costs, you pay them on a regular basis. Um, with variable costs, sometimes you pay them on a regular basis, sometimes you pay them on an irregular basis. Um, you know, fixed costs cannot be easily changed. You need to make some big decisions to change fixed costs. Variable costs, you can change them with some changes, few changes, tweaks in behavior. Uh, for example, fixed cost examples would be bond. The bond is normally the bond repayment or your rent for where you live is always kind of the same every month. And for you to actually change it, you're going to have to um, relocate, which is a big decision. Okay, transport, for example, your 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 monthly installments to your car or your your monthly bus ticket. It's normally a fixed a fixed amount. Examples of variable costs would be food. If I buy more food, I pay more. If I reduce certain things in food, I don't do takeaways, I pay less. So they are variable because they change. I can change them by slightly tweaking my behavior. Fuel, if I drive more, I, I spend more. Um, if I decide not to drive around during weekends or I decide, you know what, I'm going to use a taxi on some days. By changing small, small changes in my behavior can change um, this expense. Clothes, for example, if I decide not to buy clothes this month, then that expense has dropped. And it's not regular. I don't buy clothes every month. So those, that's the difference between fixed and variable costs. And I'm suggesting that we label our expenses by in, 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 into fixed and, 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 and variable. Now, why is this important? Why is this useful? Okay, let's think about fixed expenses, right? Let me talk about fixed ex expenses. Of course, fixed expenses, for me to change them, let's say I run into financial difficulties. For me to change fixed expenses, I need to make big decisions. I need to make big decisions. Let me, let me give an example. Give an example of big decisions. So let's say um, this is my fixed cost, which is my monthly bond or my monthly rental in this place. For me to actually change and reduce this, the big decision as I must make is moving out of this place and move to a, a cheaper place or move back home. It's a big decision. It may need me to consult certain people if I'm married. I may need to consult back home if I need to move back home and let them know I want to move back home. So to, to make the change, I need to make big decisions, okay? That's what fixed costs are, are, are about. So here's another example. I'm driving a luxurious car and I'm running into financial difficulties. To make the change, I have to actually downgrade into a, a small car. So I'm going to need to sell this car back to the, to, to the dealership and then start buying. It's a big decision. It might be even a bigger decision where I say, you know what, I am no longer using cars, I'm going to use public transport. There are big steps that must be taken. But the beauty about fixed costs is that when you've made that big decision, they give you an opportunity to have a big cut in your cost. So let's look at variable expenses and how they normally work. So with variable expenses, for you to change them, if, if for example you run into financial difficulties and you need to make some changes and some cuts into your budget, it is much easier to change your variable cost. That's why I'm saying label your cost so that when you run into financial difficulties, you don't have to think hard. You just go to everything that has a V. That's easier to change because it's small tweaks, small changes in your behavior. Let me give you an example. 
Um, let's say, for example, you were buying takeaways all the time. It's a small change. All you need to do is to actually move from takeaways to Kevin's Cafe. You've just, you've just slightly changed your behavior. Here's another example. Um, electricity cost. Electricity cost really depends on your behavior. One moment you left all the lights on even though you are just sitting in the dining room. But guess what? If you just change a little bit and you say, you know what, when I'm not in a room, the lights are going to be off. It's a small, it's a small change, but it helps you to save your cost. And that's the difference between variable cost and fixed cost. That's why it's important to label your expenses because then it assists you when you need to make certain changes because you are under financial pressure. You don't need to think hard. You just go to your budget. Anything that has a V, it's easy. I'm going to make a few tweaks. And I suggest that when you've labeled it, also make a note and say, what kind of changes will need to happen if I were to run into financial difficulties? It makes it easier, because remember, when you are under financial pressure, sometimes your mind can lock. When your mind is locked and you are struggling to, to think because you are stressed, the budget thinks for you. The budget says it helps you to make decisions easier. So it helps you. You then see something that has a V, and then you make some notes and say, this is variable. What behavior do I need to tweak? I've made a note around that, and then I then tweak that behavior. And it helps you to stick to your budget. It helps you to live within your means. And of course, there you have it. You're going to have a difference. You're going to label your expenses. For example, the bond is labeled as fixed. It's a fixed expense. And it is a need because shelter is a need. And then the other label that I want us to talk about very quickly is labeling your expenses to say, are they financed through debt or they are financed through cash? Now, what do I mean by that? Remember that your bond, even though it's a monthly payment and it is a need, but you are actually paying debt. So you're going to put a D next to it. Yet your, your groceries, unless you're already buying them on account, your groceries are normally financed by cash. So I'm going to put a C next to it. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you the beauty of this. Everything that I've labeled as debt. So debt refers to items that I'm financing through debt. As I've said, like your bond, your car, and then cash raised to things that I'm finding. What is the usefulness of this? Look at this beauty. We said that the budget must also assist you to remove everything that threatens your ability to, change, to, to actually meet your basic needs. Now look at this beauty. This is very beautiful. Let's say I've got some extra income, okay? It could be coming from a bonus, it could be coming from a salary increase, it could be coming from dividends that I've received because I'm an investor extra income that I have, right? I can easily use that extra income to go and deploy it to fast tracking my repayment of debt. Because remember, the budget is a tool to remind me what my priorities are. Whatever I've labeled as a D, it's something that I always send my extra money to. And, and to, in, in, the last, in the last episode, which is the bonus episode, we're going to look at a case study. We're going to put all of this together and you'll see all these things working for you, right? But the other thing about labeling things as debt and cash is this. I'm able to, as I sit and I look at my budget, anything that's labeled D gives me hope. It says, in the future, when I've finished paying off this debt, I, when I'm debt-free, this is the extra cash I would have available. And the budget must also assist you to be motivated and know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. But also, when I've labeled things as, 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 as debt, I'm able, so there are things that I might not afford today, that I say to myself, well, I've got a few things that are still debt repayments. I know that in a few months I'm finishing this account. This is the amount of money that will be left. And therefore, I'm able to postpone certain expenses to a point where I'm out of debt. Then I'll use this extra money to to pay that. So it's important to, to label your thing. I know this, this lecture is a bit longer, but, but bear with me. So now, what have I done? The bond, for example, is, is, is debt repayment, so I put a D next to it. My electricity, I pay for what I've used, so it's not debt, so it's cash. Um, you know, my clothing account is debt. So, so by, put, by label all, all of this, I know that I'm looking forward to a time where I can release 500 rands. I know that when I, when I finish paying off my floating account, I'm actually releasing 500 rands. I can already plan for these 500 rands to be deployed to other areas. So that's important. And then the next label I want us to talk about, which is the last label, is labeling your expenses between savings and actual spending. What do I mean by that? Um, and actual spending is, 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 is saying that 
Okay, let's start here. Savings would be anything that I'm saving for the future. So, for example, I know that in a few months' time, um, I don't know, I'm going to be visiting Namibia. Okay, so I'm going to put an S next to the month because I'm putting money aside for my future expense. Whereas your actual expenses, I'm actually incurring this. For example, I'm actually paying for water and life. I'm not saving money for future water and life. I'm paying for it. I'm actually paying for my for my pay TV. I'm actually paying. So that's the differentiation. Okay, so savings, as I said, for example, I'm planning a holiday with my friends. So we know that in August, every August we go for the holiday. For the holiday. So I put aside 500 rands because we've agreed how much it's going to be. So I put aside the 500 rands. So in my budget, there's a 500 rands that every month that I set aside for that. But I put an S next to it to signify that this is not an actual expense. It is a future expense, so I'm saving for it. Now, why is this important? Why is this useful to me? This is how it becomes useful. The items that I put as savings, it means that money I'm not using right now. So if I run into financial difficulties, so let's say, for example, there's a quick emergency, um, you know, I need to rush to Nambiti because someone has passed away and I need to be there and bury them. I can always go to everything that is labeled as S. So, for example, I can always go to these 500 rands and say, you know what, we're going to postpone this trip. So I then say, gents, I'm not going to this trip. We are postponing it. And I've done it many times because I know it's written as an S. Okay? So I then postpone that. So it gives you that opportunity to, to do that. So I know that everything that is an S is an opportunity to postpone these things. So, for example, I may have been saving some money for, for buying clothes during sales. Because I've got a bit of an emergency today, I then say I am not going to buy these clothes. This money I'm going to then redeploy to different areas. So that's the importance of labeling your expenses. And that's really what I wanted to cover in this, in this session. So maybe just to recap, we've already spoken about dividing your budget into different categories. And within those categories, you put your different line items, which are subcategories. For example, this is the physical category, which has to do with health, safety, and environment. So you put our bond, electricity, water, and things like that. Excuse me. And then obviously you set goals for, for each of the categories. What is my goal when it comes to health? Safety. What do I want to achieve this? I want to be very healthy. I want to be this. And then it's going to determine what expenses you're going to incur. And then I've spoken about labeling your expenses. So I then say, you know what? Water is, I'm spending cash on it, so I'm not financing it through debt. It is an actual amount that I'm spending, so it's not a saving. So I'm not going to, I can't postpone this. It's an actual amount. It's variable because it depends on, on how I use the water. But you see, um, for example, levies are fixed because I'm going to pay the same levies because I stay in this place. You know? So it's things like that. And it is a need or a want. I've already spoken about it. So those are, those are the things that we've covered so far. Next, in the next video, we're going to be talking about how then do I track my budget? We are now getting to the exciting part of saying, I've prepared my budget. I've set it up now. It's going to be working for me. How do I track it to make sure that I'm living within my means? And then also we're going to talk about reviewing your budget. How do I review my budget? How often do I review it? And that's the thing that we're going to look at. So that's all, folks. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. And thank you very much for your time. And I hope I didn't take too much of your time. Thank you.